is no doubt that trying to work your way through the complexities of today's very, very demanding, high-speed tempo uh, with so many different disciplines interacting, uh, revolutions in communications that are affecting uh, just your daily way of life, uh, and also uh, the enormous amount of interactions that are going on in regards to uh, the different realms of society, yeah, be they economic, the, the academic, political and conflicts and, and the like. And the, and the fact that we got so much information feeding us all the time is that you always feel there's a certain pressure there uh, just to know more or to be aware or not be caught off guard uh, and to be surprised. This creates a, a hidden stress. Uh, and although people at my age are, are sort of, by experience, able to sort of weed a bunch of this stuff out, young people are just bombarded and, 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 it, and it's continuous. Uh, and so this constant stress will create ultimately traumas and even push them to uh, moving towards dilemmas on the ethical and moral side of things and that can in fact uh, create uh, a discussion in their values and how they see things and all that can lead terribly uh, to some very uh, horrific endings uh, on some of them and we've seen a lot of that. So the, the world that surrounds the student body today is different, demanding and closes in on them. How do we handle those types of scenario uh, is by one focusing on a longer term. That is say don't just look at what you're caught up in now but in fact, look at the longer term solution, the longer term objectives, something that's not, you can't get an answer with right now, but you want to work towards. I finally, with my PTSD and so on, realized that unless I saw something long term, like trying to eliminate the use of child soldiers, that's going to take me 20, 30, 40 years. I may not finish it, but it's given me an impetus and it's a worthy cause and a just cause and so I'm not disappointed when it doesn't go as fast as I want, but it does give me a, a sort of an antidote to a lot of the pressures. The second element, which is critical, is you need peer support. Yeah, there's the psychiatry, the therapy, and so on. Those are all very, very good. And if you need it, go do it. And if you feel you need it, go even faster. And it's in to talk about your therapist. It's not it's something to hide, it's in. It's stupid not to talk about. You talk about the doctor if you got an ingrown toenail. I mean, so you can talk about your psychiatrist and psychologist and prove that you're, you're smart enough to realize that you're injured and that you need help. But the peer support is the key. Peers being available to simply sit there and listen to you. Don't ask a stupid question. Don't engage in the conversation. Just sit there and listen. It could be four hours of drinking Tim Hortons coffee. But the, what you can do is probably save, ultimately even save lives, which we have proven in the military, that peer support to us on average saves, prevents a suicide a day. And so get engaged and do not fear the fact that you are getting support. That's fine. It's only a dummy that stays alone, isolated, and doesn't realize that he needs support or she needs support and refuses to, to use it. And it is, I think, sad if people, colleagues, don't see those who are in some need of support offer some services that cost absolutely nothing except time.